Select a large size cassette and place it the correct way up on the table. Select an appropriate size stationary grid and place it exactly on top of the cassette. Ensure it is the correct way up and collimate to within the edges of the grid. Place the patient in lateral recumbency with the thorax positioned on the cassette. Select the positioning and restraint equipment needed. Extend the forelimbs cranially and secure each limb with a sandbag. Place a sandbag over each hind limb. Place a sandbag over the neck or mid cervical region to secure the patient. Place a small foam wedge under the sternum to prevent rotation of the thorax. Line the tube head up so that the primary beam is positioned over the thorax and within the cassette. Centre the primary beam over the mid-thorax. Cranially collimate the primary beam to include the manubrium or thoracic inlet. Cordially collimate the primary beam to include the last rib. Dorsally and ventrally to include the skin surfaces. Label the patient identification and date and place this within the primary beam. Place the right marker also within the primary beam. You have now correctly positioned the patient for a right lateral radiograph of the thorax, including all the necessary equipment. Select a large size cassette and place it the correct way up on the table. Select an appropriate size stationary grid and place it exactly on top of the cassette ensuring it is the correct way up. Collimate to within the edges of the grid. Place the patient in dorsal recumbency with the pelvis positioned on the cassette. Select the positioning equipment. Place the patient in a trough or use sandbags to prevent the rotation of the body. Draw the forelimbs cranially and place one sandbag over each forelimb or use ties.
ask for assistance. Immediately rotate the hind limbs to bring femora parallel to each other, with the patella facing up towards the ceiling. Tape the limbs into position. Secure each hind limb cordially into position using sandbags or ties. Ensure the tail is lying directly in the midline. Ensure there is no rotation about the longitudinal axis of the body. Line the tube head up so that the primary beam is positioned over the hips and is within the cassette. Centre the primary beam over the pubic symphysis. Collimate cranially to include the wings of the ilium cordially to include the mid-shaft femurs. This may extend to the patella. Laterally to include the skin surfaces. Label with the Kennel Club registration number, date, microchip number, and place within the primary beam. Place the left right marker correctly within the primary beam. You have now correctly positioned the patient for a BVA Kennel Club hip dysplasia scheme including all necessary equipment. Select a large sized cassette and place it the correct way up on the table. Select an appropriate size stationary grid and place it exactly on top of the cassette, ensuring it is the correct way up. Collimate to within the edges of the grid. Place the patient in lateral recumbency with the caudal abdomen positioned on the cassette. Select the positioning equipment. Extend the hind limbs cordially and secure each limb with a sandbag or a tie. Place a small foam wedge in between the stifles to ensure that the medium plane of the body is parallel to the cassette. Place a small foam wedge under the sternum again to ensure that the medium plane of the body is parallel to the cassette. Line the tube head so that the primary beam is positioned over the caudal abdomen and within the cassette. 
descend to the primary beam over the caudal abdomen. Collimate cranially to include the umbilicus and caudally to include the ischium, ventrally and dorsally to include the skin surfaces. Label with the patient identification and date and place this within the primary beam. Place the right marker also within the primary beam. You have now correctly positioned the patient for a right lateral cystogram, including all the necessary equipment. Select a medium sized cassette and place it the correct way up on the table. Collimate to within the edges of the cassette. Place the patient in left lateral recumbency with the tibia and fibula region positioned on the cassette. Select the positioning equipment. The hind limb furthest away from the cassette should be drawn out of the way of the limb nearest the cassette and secured with a sandbag or tie. Leave the hind limb closest to the cassette in a natural position. Place a small foam wedge under the hock or stifle to correct rotation of the tibia and fibula. Place a sandbag over the foot to stabilise the hind limb that's on the cassette. Line the tube head up so that the primary beam is positioned over the tibia and fibula region and within the edges of the cassette. Centre the primary beam on the mid tibia fibula. Collimate distally to include the tarsal joint and proximally to include the stifle joint, cranially and caudally to include the skin surfaces. Label with the patient identification and date and place this within the primary beam. Place the left marker correctly within the primary beam. You have now correctly positioned the patient for a mediolateral radiograph of the left tibia and fibula, including all the necessary equipment. Select a large size cassette and place it the correct way up on the table. Select an appropriate size stationary grid and place it exactly on top of the cassette ensuring it is the correct way up. Collimate within the edges of the grid. Place the patient in dorsal recumbency with the thorax positioned over the cassette. Select the positioning equipment. <laughs> 
draw the four limbs cranially and secure each one with a sandbag or a tie. Place the patient in a trough or use sandbags to prevent lateral rotation of the body. Ensure the lateral line of the patient is parallel to the plate. Line up the tube head so that the primary beam is positioned over the thorax and within the cassette. The primary beam is centred over the mid-thorax. Collimate cranially to include the manubrium or the thoracic inlet. Caudally to include the last rib. Laterally to include the skin surfaces. Label with the patient identification and date and place this within the primary beam. The left right marker correctly placed within the primary beam. You have now correctly positioned the patient for a ventrodorsal thorax, including all the necessary equipment. Select a medium sized cassette and place it the correct way up on the table. Select an appropriate sized stationary grid and place it exactly on top of the cassette ensuring it is the correct way up. Collimate to within the edges of the grid. Place the patient in lateral recumbency with the neck or cervical spine positioned on the cassette. Select the positioning equipment. Draw both forelimbs cordially and place a small foam wedge between the forelimbs to ensure that the medium plane is parallel to the cassette. Secure each forelimb with a sandbag or tie. Place a small foam wedge under the nose to correct rotation of the head. Place a small foam wedge under the neck to correct sagging of the neck. Line the tube head up so that the primary beam is positioned over the cervical spine and within the cassette. Centre the primary beam over the mid-neck region. Collimate cranially to include the occipital crest. Caudally to include the level of the first rib dorsally to include the skin surface, ventrally to include the mid-neck region. Label with the patient identification and date and place within the primary beam. Place the left marker correctly within the primary beam. You have now correctly positioned the patient for a left lateral survey view of the cervical vertebrae, including all necessary equipment. <laughs>
select a large sized cassette and place it the correct way up on the table. Select an appropriate size stationary grid and place it exactly on top of the cassette ensuring it is the correct way up. Collimate to within the edges of the grid. Place the patient in lateral recumbency with the lumbar spine region positioned on the cassette. Select the positioning equipment. Draw the hind limbs cordially. Place a small foam wedge in between the stifles to ensure that medium plane of the body is parallel to the cassette. Secure each hind limb with a sandbag or tie. Place a small foam wedge under the mid lumbar spine to prevent sagging. Place a small foam wedge under the sternum to ensure that the medium plane of the body is parallel to the cassette. Ensure that the lateral line of the patient is parallel to the cassette. Line up the tube head so that the primary beam is positioned over the lumbar spine region and within the edges of the cassette. Centre the primary beam over the mid lumbar spine. Collimate cordially to include the greater trochanter, cranially to include the thoracolumbar junction, dorsally to include the skin surface, ventrally to include the mid abdomen. Label with the patient identification and date and place within the primary beam. Place the right marker within the primary beam. You have now correctly positioned the patient for a right lateral survey radiograph of the lumbar spine including all the necessary equipment. Select a large size cassette and place it the correct way up on the table. Select an appropriately sized stationary grid and place it exactly on top of the cassette ensuring it is the correct way up. Collimate to within the edges of the grid. Place the patient in sternal recumbency with the thorax positioned over the cassette. Select the positioning and restraint equipment. Draw the elbows cranially and secure each forelimb with a sandbag. Place a sandbag over the neck to secure the patient's head. Use a trough or sandbags to prevent lateral rotation of the body.
The hind limbs should be flexed into a normal crouching position. Ensure the patient's medium plane is at right angles to the cassette. Line up the tube head so that the primary beam is positioned over the thorax and within the cassette. Centre the primary beam over the mid thorax. Collimate cranially to include the manubrium or the thoracic inlet, laterally to include the skin surfaces, and caudally to include the last rib. Label with the patient identification and date and place within the primary beam. Place the left right marker within the primary beam. You have now correctly positioned the patient for a dorso ventral radiograph of the thorax, including all the necessary equipment.